All right, so we're all here. We'll call the meeting to order for July 8th. Uh, this is our first select board meeting in person in quite a long time, so it's a little bit different. We'll be used to it again, maybe. Um, first order out of business is the consent agenda. We have uh, no minutes, but we do have warrants AP 2049, AP 2049S, AP 2050, AP 2050S. AP 2051, AP 2051S, WP 2052, WP 2052S, WP 2052R, AP 2101, AP 2102, PR 2026, PR 2027, and PR 2101. Uh, we have a Community Preservation Act Committee appointment of members for a three-year term, DPW Water Tank Fencing Award, uh, reject the bid and rebid the project, uh, and then also Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee and the Climate Change Committee uh, appointments. So moved. I can uh, second, but I just wanted to pull out the Climate Change Committee, because I just had to correct some of the members on it. Okay, so we'll pull out climate change and uh, everything else. Uh, any discussion? Okay. I just wanted to mention the uh, CPA, if you want to. Uh... All right, we'll pull that out as well. Then. Um, so, all right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Shut the door. Please. Christian, did you go? Oh, yeah. So, sorry. <laughs> so, the climate change, the members are as follows uh, Jack Sykowski is the chair, Michael Doctor, Jeannie uh, Armstrong, Stephen Armstrong, and Kathleen Nelson. Right now. Okay. Any motion to approve those? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, CPA, uh, we have some other opens. For a three-year term, we have letters of interest from Cassandra Gonzalez, uh, Edwin Matusko, and Mary Thayer. Who are they replacing? The Mary was on there, I believe. Edwin was on there. And uh, Cassandra is looks like replacing Amy Morris Friedman. So I think that I, 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 it's just my yes. I just throw that out. Andy doesn't. Maybe he didn't send in a letter. I don't think he knows that he was supposed to. He's still assuming he is the chair. Um, he doesn't know that there was something there. I, I just asked him if he uh, knew about the new person, and he says, "Oh no, I don't." And he thinks he's he thinks he's there. And he thinks he's on it. So I just. So maybe we should clarify it. Maybe yeah. we should postpone it until our next meeting. Is, is, a new, is there room for another member? Or? No, those are the three. And those are the only letters of interest we got. So it's, that's what we've done in the past is based off letters of interest. Yeah. Michelle has been sick, which may offer him a slight excuse. When were these, but when were these due? I mean, we got. When were they due, Jane? Well, they were two people who always just submitted letters. I used Mary's letter because she just filled a position. Um, Sandra submitted it, Edwin submitted a letter, and I mean, we didn't list letters of interest again. Okay. So, I think um, Edwin sent one to each one of us. Well, Edwin did. Mm -hmm. um, and in the past, people have, for sort of the bigger communities, they have said that they're interested again. Um, Cassandra Gonzalez, um, sent an email asking about it, and she sent a letter in, and I put it on it. Uh, Andy Kopacki, he, um, he talked to um, a few of them on the committee, wanted to stay on the committee, but because he was no longer um, on the rec, he had to come off. He wanted again, but there was no room, and he more screaming told him there was no room for him. So he would have submitted something, but he is in belief that there's no room. So. Maybe it's something that you want to put out there and then decide about it. But I know there's plenty of interest in it. But that's why he, he would have submitted one too. A committee with people 
being interested is very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I I like the interest, but at the same time, um, interest only after it's been posted. Of who who else is interested is also an issue for me. So. I can just make a motion that we delay this until our next meeting. This decision. Also, Any further discussion? Well, we kind of always known when you're re-upped that you needed to resubmit a letter of intent. Right. I mean, that's been the process right along for any committee that you've been on. It's nothing new. Um, it's always been done in the past. So I don't know how um, we're at a new fiscal year, July 1st. That's where we reappoint our committees and everything like that. Um, Glad to see there are other people certainly of, of interest. It's really nice. Um, fresh new faces are not always bad. We need that for all the committees. <laughs> well, you know, and it's not often that we get as many people uh, of interest that want to join a committee. So um, I'm kind of excited about having some um, some new faces. Not that I don't appreciate all the help that Andy has done in the past, but you know. Um, So all, I'm sorry, any further discussion on that? All those in favor of delaying the appointment? Say aye. Yeah. Any opposed? No. 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 Take these three and work it out. So then could I get a motion to that effect? A motion to accept the three. Mm -hmm. And if you accept the submitted letters for the CPA. I'll second that. Any further discussion on that? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll say no. James, were you a yes? I was uh, aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah. Four or one carries. Okay. Uh, and we let's do a quick one before our 545 appointment. Uh, cell phone agreement for the building inspector. Um, Tom would like to use his own cell phone rather than the town provide him a cell phone and pay for a plan. So he is asking for a $50 a month stipend uh, in exchange, instead of taking a town phone. So, um, I kind of have a problem with somebody using their own cell phone for public service. Okay. I don't think that, I think we've just about <laughs> the old man <laughs> <laughs> What were you saying? I'm up at the Go away. Cell phone. Cell phone. Cell phone. Cell phone. Um, I think we ran into a little bit of difficulty with somebody on the Board of Health um, that has a town cell phone and used it for personal use without our knowledge. And when we needed to collect that cell phone, all of his personal data was on it. Um, so I think, like, I would prefer that they have separate cell phones. I think that's the proper thing to do. What do you do? I have one of the proper phones I use for. You do both? And how do we work it with you? It's all public record. It's only one of the video. I just don't use it <laughs> Okay. Well, I know, but I mean, that, and that's the issue. Um, if people are using it privately, what they have on there. Um, my earphone, public. This you, have two, phone. you have two phones? Yeah, I have one. You only have one. Okay. So can I ask you a question? What do you do when you go on vacation and somebody calls that phone? Do you forward it to anybody? Uh, uh, so no, I, I work, I'm always on duty, yeah, so no. I answer as, as much as I can, and if I can, I'll call Mitch and I'll ask him to return a phone call or something like that, but I can't count the number of emails, texts, and phone calls that I've answered when I'm not in the office. Do you have a policy on this? Yeah, you do. I uh, guess we have a policy that the town can issue cell phones and people can use them with uh, discretion. Um, so no no misbehaving on the town's cell phone. 
I guess your question is, I just use my personal, there's nothing in my budget for something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, is that what <laughs> yeah. So if you're using a town phone for personal issues, you would obviously have to be careful with what you're doing. If you're using a personal phone for town business and you're getting a stipend, what is the difference? Are, are all those records still available to what the What do you town? do, John? Yeah. I've got two separate phones for which I've been hey. since way back when I have a town phone and I have my personal phone. Okay. Which is a total pain, but I was one of the ones that originally was given a town phone and I was told that I could use it for personal and then at one point I have to itemize the phone calls that I was using and either pay half of the phone bill Finally, I just said, just give me another phone and it'll be all time business. Chief. So I handled the cell phones for the department. Um, and one of them was the building inspector cell. Uh, there, is a, there is an option through Verizon where you can keep your own personal phone. And they have a way of actually separating personal from your business on one phone. Uh, that has been offered up to like our lieutenants and stuff. Some of them don't take the opportunity. I know my daddy is looking to, he's going to be taking over uh, Tim's old cell phone because um, he uses his personal phone right now. So that is an option that we could discuss, but uh, that's it. So maybe we want to table it to clarify if that's something that he wants to do rather than take a second phone or? Yeah, I, mean, I like the concept, I mean, I like the concept of him using, you know, getting a statement. It's more of the logistics of the whole thing. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine with it. I kind of like, um, I like the idea that, that Verizon has in separating the two. I think that would, that would work for me uh, if there was something that could do that. And it becomes, a, it's basically a separate phone line. So uh, we asked about the public, public record part, so it's separate. So their phone is their phone still. And anything done on that additional, you know, it's basically clicking a button on your cell phone that puts you into a different program. So then I guess the question is, do we, do we really, should we really be giving a $50 stipend if we're still paying for a separate line of service just on his device? Well, I can find out what the, the cost is. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So then you want to wait till the next meeting to make that decision? And then just to clarify. I'm kind of real worried about the public record. It's the same, it's the same concept yeah. of when I was sending my town emails and my private uh, email address, right. my personal email address, we found out it was illegal or not in the best interest of me to right. do it that way. So. Well, but I like the idea where his that phone could be divided between the two, separated between I think private. still a public record person's issue. No, no, it's not, John. Yeah, it. John, you're six feet apart. If you feel comfortable, you can take your mask off if you chose to. You don't chose to. I just want everybody to see him. Okay. <laughs> I just, there is that option. Uh, okay, so then let's clarify as far as the cost and public records and all that, and then we'll revisit this next meeting. So, so we'll table that for now. Um, all right, so we have a 545 appointment for the town administrator position. Um, we did our second round of interviews today. Uh, we narrowed the field down to two remaining candidates. Um, we could not narrow it down to one. Uh, there was quite a bit of discussion and uh, disagreement over who was the best fit. So we've gotten it down to two. We've asked them to come back and, and come before the full board this evening. Um, so Buzz is out there with both candidates. We flipped a coin to see who would go first, and uh, Mr. Garino is going to be the first one to come in front of the, the board. And so we'll have a chance to ask any questions that we want to ask the candidates. Could be something they've talked about in the past for an interview, something new, doesn't matter. And nothing's off the table as far as what's going on. Do we get to make a statement first before we ask uh, Yeah, we could probably do that. that just a, a minute or two, just to say hi since he has the dinner Yeah. So, Buzz, are you ready? Yes. What, if you could bring Tom in first. All right. Tom Garino, you folks uh, spoke with Tom, Tom you sit right there, earlier today. And he 
screening committee meeting. All right. And so, Joyce, was, uh, I don't think you've met Joyce yet, nope. but if you can uh, just give us a quick minute or two summary of who you are, just that way the viewers at home can. Sure. Um, and thanks again for having, having me back this evening. A um, couple of good things happened with that. I had to change my tie because I stopped for ice cream on the way home the first time. So, uh, never a good thing. Um, and my wife caught me having ice cream, so that's never a good thing also. I'm a, a Franklin County native. I was born and brought up in Greenfield. Uh, did a lot of work here in the Valley um, as a circuit rider a long time ago in some of the hill towns, western hill towns uh, of Franklin County. I was in Northfield and over in Warhol, which is to the east. I uh, went to Vermont for what I thought was going to be a year. Um, ended up meeting my spouse-to-be, and we're still in Vernon, Vermont. Um, I was an economic development director and a town manager in that state, and then came and ran the Mass Rural Development Council uh, for 10 years, as long as the funding stayed with it. When the funding uh, ran out, we were based out of Mass Amherst, and I had an office in Boston with EOHCD, um, and then one on the Cape as well. Um, I went to work in Bourne on a 90-day interim town administrator hitch that lasted 14 and a half years. Um, 13 of those years were really good. The last 18 months or so were difficult. Um, the board and I agreed to separate in the most amicable way. I still am in contact with the board. I uh, still give them at least a member or two advice on their call. Um, I've been most recently working in the little town that I live in, up in Vernon, helping them uh, recruit for a town administrator, not a position that I was applying for, but I'm helping them recruit and been help, helping them through this COVID uh, CARES Act type issues as well um, as keeping the, from town meeting forward, keeping things on the rail. And I've been working in the town of Wareham as a consultant on their uh, multiple uh, contracts on the wastewater treatment facility and working with the town administrator there. So let's open it up to any questions you may have. Christian, I know you had some questions from sure, yeah. watching to earlier today. Yeah, I it was going to start with, uh, you know, what attracts you to Hadley? There's a number of, of different things that attract me to Hadley. Um, one, it's close to home. Two, it's been a well-managed community for the last 15 to 20 years. Um, there's been a good balance of growth in agriculture here. I know the area. Um, as I said, I think there's a lot of interesting things for me to do and my, that I can bring my toolbox uh, to have me with. Uh, that balance of ag and growth, um, traffic issues, uh, working with the wastewater and the, the DPW and your enterprise funds. Uh, looking at some innovative ways to do some new things. One of the things that I've been most fortunate about in my tenure um, in Bourne was to be able to hire, because we had this uh, retirement tsunami that came on us about five or six years ago. I was able to bring in some really, really sharp, young talent um, into department leadership roles. Uh, some promoted from within and some came from the outside. And we did, we were able to do some new things that kind of we weren't able to do with some of the old guard, if you will. Um, a lot of moving into a computerized software age on our, on our inspection services, on our MS4, um, tracking uh, much more work with GIS than we had done in the past. Uh, I was able, and I, I'm probably the senior member of, uh, of a newer municipal group like uh, ICMA, but it's on a much smaller scale called ELGL, uh, Engaging Local Government Leaders. And they're primarily younger folk, uh, but it certainly keeps me fresh on what's going on on citizen engagement, um, how we better do that as opposed to just posting on the website our agendas and getting people involved on a, from the community. Um, 
on electronic platforms, and that seems to be really helpful. Hadley just has a lot of things to offer. Um, not to drone on, on, on these things, but it has a good mix. It has a it has a historic component. It has uh, commitment. If you look at the infrastructure, the infrastructure. I mean, your buildings. You've committed yourself to um, expending on new facilities. Um, your library. I can't. I can't wait for that to to open. Um, and you would. It seems to me, based on reading your town website and then looking at GazetteNet and those things you have online, that you are willing to try new things while having respect for the history of the community. This is a really good opportunity for me. Um, and one of the other things, I'm going to be honest, it's close to home. I'll be able to sleep in my own bed, which is something I haven't been able to do for a long time, too. That was actually the question I was going to ask why you wanted to come to Hadley. Mm -hmm. Did you have more questions? Yeah, I can ask more. <laughs> I can make you on yeah. um, You know, I think COVID-19 is a, it's a different opportunity, right? It's got a lot of negative impacts, but I think it also allows us to reinvent ourselves a little bit as a town as we try to come back to normal. You know, certain businesses will be gone, new businesses will come. And how could you envision you know, facilitating kind of uh, redefining of our community as, as town administrator. So one of, one of the mantras I've used over the years that I learned uh, is change is opportunity. Um, change brings the, the ability to think newly, uh, try to shake off some things that because we've always done them that way. Um, and to look at if you lose restaurants or if you lose some retail establishments that aren't able to survive the long-term shutdown, what does the town offer from an economic development standpoint? Are there micro loans that you can help new startups with? Um, I know a community that's gone on a regional basis to EOHCD for some for a uh, for a grant to just do, simply do that, offer some micro micro lending, uh, be it deferred loans or straight out grants. Um, is there a way you can re envision your zoning um, that provides for? I don't want to say greater density on Route Nine; it's pretty dense, but maybe off of off of Route Nine into some of the other areas. Can you change your height requirements? Is that something you want to do? Um, what do you can you do on second floor businesses that may be in a maybe in a home or um, can you allow for accessory businesses um, in some areas where you perhaps haven't before? Um, is there a need to rebrand what Hadley is? I don't know, uh, but that's certainly something that you would engage the citizenry with as well as your state and, and local leaders on, you know, what do we want to be uh, in 15 years type of thing? Um, do you set a new strategic agenda for that? Uh, and who do you bring into play for that, for those facilitated type meetings? I, I think there's always opportunity to look to new things provided you're willing to bring everyone in the, in the community, all different parts of the community, into the conversation. And I just have one more, if I could. It's, uh, you know, diversity is also something I think we, is a challenge for us at, in this community and trying to engage a, a, you know, broad spectrum of citizens into town government and those kind of things. Do you have experience with any kind of diversity initiatives or, or uh, creating diverse, more diverse workplaces, uh, civic environment, etc. Warren wasn't one of your more um, ethnically diverse communities. Um, we certainly had uh, a more ethnically diverse communities to the south of us in New Bedford and Fall River, um, and in that area. And we 
when we hired from a hiring practice, we would certainly uh, advertise in those local newspapers um, as well as online and all the other things that you need to do. We did have a, a fairly substantial um, Cape Verdean community uh, within Bourne as well as uh, some issues with, I don't want to say issues like it's a bad thing, but some issues with the Wampanoag uh, native um, nation. Um, we worked on, there are some things with Aboriginal fishing rights and some things that we had, we sometimes ran into some difficulties with that we had to address. But to bring in a more diverse community, you need to be able to offer uh, within your town hall, um, the ability for translation if it's necessary, and that, that may be something. Bilingual, uh, if you will, uh, advertisements, um, working with some of the social and ecumenical groups in the town, within the area, not just in the town, to be able to recruit. Um, and there, there are those groups out there that are willing to put that kind of assistance in for you. And then once, if you do um, diversify your workforce, how do you celebrate that diversity? How do you be sure that there's fairness throughout the organization? Um, and how do you be sure, the other thing is how are you sure that uh, perhaps you don't offer uh, professional development in, in a bilingual way? As an example, maybe that's one of the things you have to start to look at. All right, thank you. John? My biggest question was in Bourne, how did you handle grants and short term loans and things like that? And how, how would you recommend applying for that type of money through the state or from the federal? So, Bourne was large enough. Um, if we obtained a grant, and I'll talk about some grant funding opportunities that we took advantage of, um, we were able to run the cash flow. We had a sufficient cash flow where we were able to, to do that if we needed to front the money and then get it back. Generally, we didn't have to do short-term borrowing for that. Um, if that were something we needed to do here, I would certainly work with the treasurer um, to be sure that whatever um, short-term, if you will, that borrowing that we did, uh, where our rates were, what the, what the premium payback would be on that, if it was a, um, a short, if you will, a short-term uh, bond anticipation of uh, if you were going to go for a long-term thing on, on, on infrastructure. We were very successful in a number of areas, both large and small in grant funding. We most recently had received a uh, $2.3 million Economic Development Administration grant that we were able to match with a $1.5 million Mass Works grant on a wastewater treatment facility. And the town also put up its own tax money, not just uh, enterprise fund money, to help match that and get that program running. We were very successful um, with some things that you wouldn't have down here, the Economic Seaport Council. Uh, we had some grants here for, for putting in um, Boat ramps, which does, again does may not sound like a big deal here, but it's a seven hundred thousand dollar ramp that we ended up having for handicap accessibility and all those types of things. We're very successful with DOHCD on housing um, and code, you know, bringing housing up to code for our, for seniors uh, and for those with low and moderate income. Uh, we worked with historic uh, historic grants in EOHCD historic tax credits to convert a school. It was a private venture, but there were some grant money available and some tax credits available to convert the former high school into affordable 55 plus housing. Uh, it took the old high school and then it added another 30 units to that. Uh, we were very successful in a number of Mass Works branch to do our Main Street over. We really envisioned a new Main Street and a new downtown because it was a pretty dead downtown. Um, it took a long time um, working with a number of different groups, but we ended up with 
several mass works grants on that. Um, part of the outcome with that, we also had an enterprise uh, zone, or like a like a opportunity zone, but it was through the county, uh, the strong county government uh, in Barnesville County. Uh, the Regional Planning Commission had regulatory authority over the municipalities on some some building projects. So we got a growth incentive zone uh, where we re envisioned our, our zoning down there. And the, the outcome over a 10 year period uh, was a brand new park with a splash pad where we never had a town green before, a brand new hotel on the canal, which had never been done before, uh, 200 units of market rate housing, uh, apartments one and two, mostly the one and two bedroom, an assisted living facility downtown, and I don't know if I said this in the, uh, before or not, three or four new restaurants. So things are really turning there. Uh, but it took a lot of work, and I think I can bring those types of experiences in grant work to you. I, I did depend on the department we used to do, go after some of the grant funding themselves. Uh, I wasn't the grants person, um, but I certainly reviewed and signed off on those. Joyce, do you have any questions? Um, so, Jeff, you mentioned that you have your thoughts on what your longevity would be here at Atlas. Uh, <laughs> hey, if I didn't die mine, uh, you would know the difference. So, <laughs> so uh, without getting into too, too much of my personal life, um, we had to make some decisions a number of years ago um, relative to some issues with, with, my, with my, my, my sons. And Barr, my wife, um, who is a much smarter and harder working person than I, sure that it's in the public sphere um, and it's true um, but she stayed she just stayed home and we knew when we took this challenge on with, with some things at home that I would work longer than a lot of people would work so I have in my head my health is good uh, notwithstanding the COVID-20 um, my, my health is good and I expect to be on the job another seven to ten years um, you know one of the things that I'm going to kind of divert for a minute if I could please uh, I talked a little earlier today about um, a program that we started in Warren called priority based budgeting we never completed it um, things changed finances changed but it's probably the most intriguing and best budgeting tool that I have seen in the number of years that I've been doing this type of work. It really pins the departments down into looking at everything they do by program, breaking things down into program, breaking things down into what's required by law, what's something the town's priority, what's nice to have, what may be able to be done with a partnership with the private sector, or simply, I don't want to say turfed off, but transitioned over to private sector. Um, those are new things that are coming along the pike. It's been around for four or five years now. And I look to be able to take those kind of innovative type things. The other one that I really hope to be able to use here um, with citizen engagement is a pro, it's a software program, you have to buy it. It's an app, David probably knows it, bang the table, you know. That's a pretty good one as they go. Um, and uh, those are types of things that I think you might be able to utilize here as well. So I may be a little gray in the gills, I do try to stay up to date on the things that are happening. And uh, I think I can offer the time not only some uh, institutional knowledge, uh, but some innovation as well as we move forward. Your financial background, um, our town is in going to MMA conferences. We were one of the mainly only ones that have, uh, did anything with our OPEP. And what did Barnstable do? With OPEP? I don't know what Barnstable did, but what Horn did. Horn, Horn. Um, we did better than more Barnstable. Okay. Um, <laughs> we sat down and created a very thorough OPEP policy. Um, we created the OPEP trust, we have the trustees, and 
started to put a fixed amount of cash in on an annualized basis plus a percentage, one half of 1% of the general fund operating budget, plus a percentage of the, we had a landfill in Bourne um, that was a very large enterprise fund that was very, it's very successful, it runs clean, it, it's a, uh, and if we received additional money in excess of X, um, some of that went into a capital stabilization account, and some of that went into the OPEB account. The other thing that we did is we looked at the enterprise funds specifically, and we started to carve out, if you will, uh, an amount of money for OPEB uh, specifically that the enterprise fund would the enterprise fund would fund it. So we have about a million six in there, I believe, the last I looked. Uh, but it was a very thorough. Uh, piece. I, I met as I was saying earlier. I met my new best friend today, the chair of the finance committee, um, <laughs> and I was fortunate. And born, I was telling tell Buzz earlier. During my tenure there, I had three exceptionally good finance committee chair people. Um, and this lab, the one who currently serves, is is absolutely a, a genius. And uh, we were able to put together a whole new set of financial policies. Including the OPEP. Okay. And what did you do with your hotel or meal tax? We didn't receive a lot of that. Um, uh, you'd think so, being the Cape, but we didn't have a lot of uh, hotel and rooms and meals. Uh, we did um, institute um, the two percent first on the meals. Uh, we went back. We were one of the last towns on the Cape to institute that. Um, we utilize that as part of our general. Um, incoming revenue on an annualized basis. We, it was about 400, uh, 350 to 400,000. Um, that is going up because the new hotel is now built, um, the new restaurants are in, and we were more interested in the Airbnb uh, tax, if you will, for the, for the more than two weeks or less than two weeks, and uh, working with the secondary home market. Didn't the uh, Kate just recently initiate a, a tax on people renting their places? That's the, that's that's the, 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 the we property. call it the Airbnb okay. type, the short-term short -term rental. And part of that short-term rental um, tax, and I don't want to get into too many weeds here, part of that is going to help fund the environmental initiatives relative to water and wastewater and abatements down there. You have a sewer? Or People aren't on. So most, or, or are they on their own septic system? Most of the town is on septic. We, in the early late eighties, early nineties, the town was when there was still a lot of money coming around in the eighties for, for water and wastewater. We, the village of Buzzards Bay, part of the village of Buzzards Bay, pretty much from Rotary to Rotary going down Main Street. Um, that's our sewer district. Um, was an intermunicipal agreement with the town of Wareham. We shipped uh, a couple of hundred thousand gallons a day to Wareham. Most recently, uh, I spoke earlier about the $2.3 million mm -hmm. grant from EDA and the $1.5 million grant. We are in the process, or they are in the process, excuse me, of constructing a small 100,000 gallon per day uh, treatment facility right next to the new police station um, that will take care of all of the main street needs that we projected uh, for the next 25 to 30 years. Any thoughts on public safety? We haven't touched on that yet, so you know, we have our departments have now gotten to the point where we're feel good about where they are. We're not certainly done yet with uh, what we would like to do for police and fire. Um, well, do you mean from a staffing perspective or from a training perspective? Or? St staffing, training, um, our police, we'd like to you know, still continue on the pathway that we've done. Chief Mason has done a great job. Chief Spankenable has um, increased 
increased our um, daytime coverage. You know, we're a volunteer fire department at nighttime, so that end of it hasn't actually been touched yet, but that's something that we still would like to work on. And ambulance, we're still in the throes of that right now. You contract the ambulance, is that correct? Um, so in Bourne, we have three. We had three stations, and they were full-time stations. Um, and the south side of the canal was getting much busier. Um, we went forward on the fire, and we ran our own advanced life support um, ambulance service within, within the town. Um, we when went. When was that started? Recently? Oh, a long time ago. A long time ago. Okay. It's been. It was a BLS for a long time, and went to paramedic service a long time ago. Um, so it's a, it was an ALS for a number of years. And Were you involved in that process? No, it was before, before, you got it was before I got there. But what we did do, we saw a need for increased um, fire. We, we wrote a grant, um, a safer grant, which was able to put a number, at least one per shift, one per, per tour, on uh, to beef, beef the ranks up by it was by eight, and we ended up keeping four of those eight, so it added one per one per per shift, if you will, because we ran four shifts. Um, we years ago, while I was there, we were having an awful time with our police department. Not an awful time, but re keeping police. We were always down six or seven or eight eight officers, uh, either through you know, all of the things that people are off for injured on duty. FMLA, uh, vacation, training, um, you know, from the time we trained to the time we hired to the time we put somebody on the street, it was 15 or 16 months. Uh, we went in and received a, a small targeted override to add police officers uh, to bring the, the ranks up to about 48 to 50 full-time officers, not including dispatch. Uh, we ran our own dispatch, and we didn't have a regional dispatch. Uh, we wanted to keep the what they call the PSAP money. We wanted to keep that money in-house, so we did our dispatch locally. The fire was dispatched out of the Sheriff's Department. Um, the fire probably still needs another four um, as, as things get busier there, but I certainly have worked with beefing up uh, the, both the police and fire department during my tenure. So, um, salary. You, you, you're familiar with what was advertised on the position, and uh, I just want to make sure that that's you know, at least by no means the highest paying talent of the city. <coughs> well, I I am aware of the range that was advertised. I, I don't think I'm going to be Tom here for a minute. I'm not sure I want to discuss, yeah. you know, Negotiate salary if I'm selected here uh, in, in, in the public realm. Okay. All right. Free cash. How do you see free cash? How should it be used? Depending on how you are currently structured, um, you should try never to use free cash for operating budget if you can do that. In born we always used about a million dollars for operating budget. We just, we would need to do that $2 million flip to be able to have that happen. But we had, we have, we did reduce the amount annually uh, of what we were trying to do with free cash. Um, free cash should be, you know, they, they, they say a minimum of five. I like to see it at 8% if you can get it up to that amount. Um, when I first came to Bourne, uh, and I discussed this in one of the other interviews, um, we were self-insured health insurance wise. We, we were a million and a half upside down, and we ended up we were spending about $8 million on health insurance. We did a lot of things to fix that, but our free cash was less than 3% of the general fund operating budget. Um, over the years and through good fiscal policy and good stewardship, both by the select board, uh, myself, the finance committee, and the departments. Uh, the departments were key um, in 
reworking budgets. So we always had a hundred dollars here. You know, that's you know, that's spending a hundred dollars here. Let's see if we can work that around. By the time I left, uh, between free cash and stabilization, free cash was at eight and a half million dollars on a without the, without the enterprise fund, about a 66 million, 68 million dollar general fund operating budget. Stabilization was in about the five and a half to six million dollar range. Capital stabilization was pushing a couple of million dollars. So we really turned it around. Um, and during this COVID um, problem that we're all dealing with, they are fortunate to have that kind of cash reserve to keep things on the rails. Any others? On that point, uh, if the taxpayers decide not to fund because of COVID and because of how much of taxes raised, are you able, willing, and ready to level fund for a year or two? Sure. Uh, I am ready to level spend. Um, level funding. Yes, but not department by department. The police department may, there may be a bottom line of levelness, but you may have to put some dollars into police and fire, uh, or one department may be in need. So everyone is, in, it's not um, level to every department. There may be adjustments in there, but level bottom line, certainly, that per department. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's it. If you want to hang out for a little bit, and um, don't want to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> See, what I'm going to be able to do now is I'm going to go into Amherst, yeah. and I'm going to get pizza <laughs> and it's one of those other things that no one's ever going to know about I'm going to take my tie off yeah, for the ice cream you might as well yeah right yeah <laughs> you support our meal packs and do it now <laughs> <laughs> we have oh. really good pizza <laughs> can I get it by the slice yes all right as long as I can get it by the slice <laughs> then I will do that when I was little now this is you'll probably remember and some of there used to be a restaurant here called the Aqua Vita. Oh, and my dad used to work, he used to take vacation time and work the Northampton Fair when they ran the horses. And it was always a big deal when I was about this high to go to the Aqua Vita with my father. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so your right. choice is Hillside across the way or Primo down? Well, you tell me which one's better. Ah, uh, 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 very see. well done. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thanks to David. Good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, boys. Thank you. 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 Thank Maybe. In the meantime, though, I'll say thank you to Dr. McKenzie, Paul McCretzky, Chief Spank Mabel, and Chief Mason for their help on the hiring committee. Hello. Hello. Hi, folks. The screening committee met Carolyn a couple of weeks ago and earlier today. Carolyn Bryant. Right. So, Hello. welcome. If you could, uh, just a minute or two, kind of introduce yourself to the viewers at home and uh, sure. for those of us that haven't met you. Okay. So, my name is Carolyn. I have been in municipal government for about 30 years, uh, focusing as a council on aging director. I started, actually I started employment, um, actually on Shady Lawn Rest Home down the street, um, while I went to UMass, and my major was gerontology. And so, um, I, actually my internship at the Amherst Council on Aging. And that's probably where I first found my love of municipal government. And then um, when the Hampton Council on Aging position opened up, I 
began working there. And we started in the basement of a town hall, which is typically very common where Councils on Aging started many years ago, and uh, finished a building project uh, about 10 years after I was there and built a brand new senior center. And it was a very small town, very similar to Hadley. I loved it. Um, and we did not have a town administrator. And so by default, I became the procurement officer um, and did the procurement with Pioneer Valley Family and uh, built a, a really beautiful, just like this, a, a wonderful senior center. Um, and then moved on to, I, I actually have to say I took a brief, very brief break. I thought I had been in municipal government for a while. I felt that, it, let me try private, the private sector. And my twin sister at 40 was having her first child and I thought I'll help her and then I'll, um, I'll try uh, the private sector and went into the private sector. And when I tell you a week later, I knew I had made the biggest mistake. It was not for me. The bottom line was not what I was, um, that was not what I was driven to, to produce. And so three years later, another council on aging uh, position became available in East Long Meadow. Um, and that's where I um, have been working since 2007 now. And um, I have loved it. I, I continue my love for municipal government, but about eight years ago, I realized that I wanted to do something more. Um, I had worked for different forms of government, Board of Selectmen, Open Town Meeting, uh, East Long Meadow, I had recently switched to a charter with um, seven council, council members. Um, and, and realized right away that, that um, I miss open town meeting. I love it. And I know it's crazy, and some of you have heard this throughout of the interview process. I love open town meeting. I, I like that, sh that people have the right to civic engagement, that they can stand up and say what they want. Um, I also spoke about um, you know, those citizens that can be against the cave people, citizens against virtually everything. But there's usually a reason for it, and it's always good to know why and what the what those issues are. Um, and I gave examples of when we were trying to put up the senior center in uh, Hamden, the resistance we got, and it was it's was an individual who had stood up at town meeting and really expressed strongly over and over again why we didn't need a senior center. And instead of just putting him in that box. Um, I had a great mentor who was my building committee chair, and he said, no, we're gonna call him, we're gonna find out what the issues were. Now we did, we called him, he couldn't believe we called him, and that, it was really, really wonderful to get that, that dialogue. I don't know if we got his vote for the senior center, but I learned a lot about reasons why people um, don't feel like they're being listened to. But I still believe that Open Town Meeting is the best. So about five years ago, um, when I realized that I needed to further my education, I went back for my MBA while I was continuing to work, um, received that. Just when my husband thought that, great, the stress level is over with, um, I have a wonderful connection with the Mass Musical Association, Denise Baker. And Denise and I had gotten to know each other because I was always calling her saying, okay, so what group can I go to? Can I go to the small town administrator's group? Can I crash that? And she realized that I was really wanting to learn about to, to be a town administrator. Um, and she uh, told me about the Suffolk program for, um, that Mass Musical Association does with uh, uh, Suffolk uh, public, uh, administration in public administration, I'm sorry, public administration, but um, it's a, a certificate program for department heads who want to move on to a management position. And it's year long, it was in Andover, so I drove every Friday to Andover um, and just loved it. I mean, that is really, really when I started to call myself, a, and I shared this with you guys, a municipal junkie. Um, that first, that our first class was learning how to identify towns. And that this professor, he, it, it was just fascinating, explained how to identify certain towns, he had five categories. If you could identify that town that your management style best fit, that would be a really, really good fit. And so there was five of them, and I don't remember all of them, but they were grouped into categories where maybe Long Meadow and East Long Meadow would fit into one category based on the dynamics, the physical characteristics, and what maybe the industry was. Um, and the one that I found that I loved, which is why I loved Hamden, was the yeoman community. 
And that's a uh, yeoman community is characterized, uh, characterized by typically an agricultural community, rural, wants to maintain that rural integrity um, and struggles with wanting to bring in economic development. Um, but there were key players in that community and learning about the patriarch and the matriarch. Um, that's not always about um, the leadership in town. It's, the, it's that quiet leadership in the background that people that have grown up there all their lives. That's who you want to get to know. It's exactly what happened to me in Hamden, and I feel like that is where my love continued. Um, and so Hadley, as I've been looking at um, positions in town administration, I've been very careful. We've had positions that have opened up right near me, um, but I knew it was not going to be a good fit. In fact, in East Long Meadow, that position was open, but I, I just, I did not want to work in a council dynamic with no open town meeting. So um, when I, when I was contacted about this position and whether I was interested in applying, um, and I realized that, yeah, I remember Hadley. You know, that was, I lived, I worked in Hadley. I used PBTA. Um, I, I know that community, and it's that, that I'd be interested in that. And so um, that's, you know, that's where that journey began applying for this. At the same time, so I have been an association, um, I've been on the finance committee for about five years and has chaired it for the last three or four years. And because of that, I was on the Association of Town Finance Committees. Um, and still, I'm still on that Association of Town Finance Committee, but I'm not on the Finance Committee any longer because at that same time, the timing was a little weird, um, I was urged to run for selectmen. So I did, I am now a month into being a selectman for uh, Wilbraham. And I have learned so much just in four meetings about the role and the actor interaction between the town administrator and, and the um, board of selectmen. And just the different dynamics, you know, of what happens and being in executive session and all of that. So they, I can see how much they are complementing each other. And right away I did check with the ethics commission to see if that would be a problem. Um, and there's none, there's many, there's several, uh, either town managers or town administrators or, or uh, department heads in, this, in, the, in the Commonwealth, excuse me, who are also in an elected position. Um, so I guess I kind of covered where my love is. I, will, I know I will always be in municipal government one way or the other, but I am based on my type of management style and um, how much I love to build relationships. Hadley does fit that yeoman characteristic that I that has brought me to this point. So I'm, I'm excited to be here. It has been a wonderful process. And um, it's nice to see you all. Um, I got used to your houses, your rooms, when I was watching some of your meetings. So it's nice to see you all in one setting. <laughs> Zoom's great. Zoom's great. But um, it is so much nicer to, to be able to see all of that space to face. So, I don't know. I was going to use my comfortable chair. <laughs> yeah, she did have a comfortable chair, yes. And somebody has a cat, wasn't it? Yeah. That, that, okay, that went across. I think the desk. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Christian, do you have any questions or John? Um, well, I can I can ask it again. You kind of answered it, but just kind of reiterated is you know what attracts you to Hadley. It sounds like the human. Uh, Absolutely. But is there more to it about the town or anything along those lines? Um. I I think it's unique. It's it's bordered by two very different communities, mm -hmm. right in the middle of that. Um, and yet, somehow, you have kept that, you protected that your agricultural land, um, the, what you promote is dear to me. My father was a farmer and was a professor um, in agriculture at New Mass. So I've always grown up with that. We, I did not grow up farming. I just started to get into herbs. That's it. So I'm not a farmer. Um, but, you know, my dad got us up at 5, five o'clock every morning, and that's when we had to get our stuff done. So I grew up with a lot of that work ethic of a farmer. But even just sitting there waiting, it was just so nice, how ironic, I'm sitting in a senior center, which has really been my whole route, is being a senior center, and I'm looking at cornfields. Only in Hadley, only in Hadley. And I thought that was, so that's a lot of it. Yeah, And then I just had a question on, just a little bit of what you're speaking about, just that you are new to the select board, you're a municipal junkie, but how do you feel you would be with the kind of the nuts and bolts of being a town administrator when it comes to knowing, you know, what dates we can have town meetings, special town meeting, what we kind of can and can't do in open session versus closed session, all those kind of things that are, you know, 
a lot of us don't know on mm -hmm. the select board, but our town administrator has been there for us to guide us yes. along yes. all those nuts and bolts. So even though I have not sat in the position of a town administrator, I've had my hands in so many different areas of municipal government. So I am very familiar with open meeting law and this, because of my role on finance, we had to know that budget cycle. So we knew when things had to get done and when it was time, you know, those certain deadlines and counting back to when the warrant had to be prepared. So I understand all that. One of the things that I, I think has helped me so much is I have had mentors throughout my life during different um, different periods of my life. Um, I, ex I met the mentor who has met with me almost up until he got a position in Concord, um, had, was meeting with me on a monthly basis. And we would just work through things and say, this is what's coming up. And one of the things I think that I can bring to the table is what I've learned from Stephen, who is my mentor, and from being under actually several town managers because that first transition of a charter, a new charter is very difficult and East Long Meadow is having a challenge, which is where I work. Um, and so we've kind of eaten up some town managers. So I have learned what not to do, or um, how to, well, that, that, that person could have done a better job communicating this and um, who, who, who should have been brought into that table. Um, and then also one of the things, Stephen, because one of the questions that was asked in my interview when I was here, not today, but um, two weeks ago, was, you know, um, I don't know if they were asking about my weakness, but I can be very passionate. And some people can say that I can be, you know, aggressive. But I really do believe it's passionate. Um, if I feel strongly about something and I know that there's a really good benefit for it, I will be very, very strong and push for it. But there are times where I, I've probably gone too far, and Stephen, who uh, has taught me, this is what you don't do. This is the, you know, call me when you need to count down when something's getting really aggravating. And so just having that, having that person to call and say, Stephen, this is what's going on. What's the most effective way to deal with this? And he'll walk me through it because he's done it the wrong way before, and he's told me, this is the, I, I want to prevent you I'm having that. And so I've learned a ton, even just, just since I've known him, how much I change and how I respond to things. Um, so, did I answer you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was great. Um, and then uh, just a couple other things is, you know, COVID-19, it's kind of like a really hard time. It's very uncertain. You don't know what's happening. Um, but it's I also kind of view it as like a time to reinvent things a little bit because yes. businesses are, you know, some are going, some are coming. There's kind of like a fresh slate to do things over again. And what do you envision in a community like Hadley where we could kind of reinvent ourselves a little bit here? Yeah, yeah. I look mean, at it that way. today I learned a lot. And Jane, I just, I'm learning from somebody that I should know everything about, <laughs> elder services. But when we were talking about what to do, what could, how to uh, make a, a safer place for the older adults to eat, to do to bring back early bird to make those suggestions to um, our restaurants to bring that set of time where it's just seniors where they're not going to be that fear of too many people around just like they do with the grocery shopping i loved it i called my work right away and said you know what this is a great idea so <laughs> i think it's things like that and even even today when we met um and we were talking you know when we were talking with um, the inspection issues and fire department and police and building um, you know, I was, I was thinking, and knowing what we did in Wolverham, um, I'm thinking of some of these changes that could have come from that meeting, if it was a real meeting and we actually had time to hash it over. Some of the changes that may take place, whether it's streamlining or, um, you know, even just, just being able to have that outdoor seating and um, to, to be able to accommodate things like that, that may be something to take further. You know, maybe some of that things, some of those things won't be temporary. Maybe those are a really good idea to, to maintain. So I think it's as we're learning to address the issues of COVID and how it's impacting every single department, um, that there are things in each department that, that may be a permanent solution and it's a better solution that we wouldn't have thought of unless, it was, unless COVID had occurred. And then my last question is just about kind of diversity in the community and if you have any experience you know, making 
whether it be committees, municipal government, senior centers kind of more open and accepting to a more diverse population. Mm -hmm. um, so we certainly deal with that with uh, the Councils on Aging and the Mass Association of Councils on Aging and um, dealing with diversity. Wasn't there 20 years ago, and, and I've been in the network for a long time, it wasn't there. But that is, I think that is um, probably one of the best things I've seen that's happened quickly in the past several years that you haven't seen before. Um, so I've been a part of that at the MCOA level. Um, so I am sure, just with my involvement with MMA, and I see what's coming down the line, and committees that are getting formed, and resolutions that are getting presented to, to bring down to different levels in school districts, um, they are a very good source. And so I think we'll see some of those templates coming down and suggested to, this, to municipalities. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. That's a good of questions. I don't know. I, I was curious as to, I am Joyce. So Hi, Joyce. Of the persons that you haven't met yet. And sometimes you're in the medical I setting. I'm in the medical. Yes, My daughter's a nurse, so she's a top. I'll be celebrating 50 years with Cooley. Um, Congratulations. So we're kind of on that role. Um, I don't know where I'm going to retire, but that's another issue. We'll talk about. <laughs> um, my thing is, is what? How would you balance being a select person and a town administrator? I, I sometimes don't know how David does all he does in 24 hours to still stay on top of anything. We're doing the budget and keeping everything straight. And I do know that at times on the select board, it's very time consuming also to be a participant on the select board. Um, how are you going to balance that? So, and that's a fair question. And, and, I'm, and I, if I were in your place right now, I would be asking the same thing. Um, one of the benefits I am, the newbie, so I will not have the chairman. Um, but I balanced being on the, the chair of the finance committee and literally met every single week from pretty much the end of October until May, sometimes June. And I was able to balance that. And oftentimes it was more than that because I was also on the subcommittee meeting. Um, our, we have I, a regional school district in Wolverham, so we had uh, subcommittee meetings every Monday night for a long time through that whole budget season. So there was oftentimes it was two meetings a night. Um, obviously, my priority is here. And I made, one of the other things is, okay, I gotta check when does Hadley meet? Cause that would have been, you know, a, a difficult thing. And um, your meetings are on Wednesdays and Wolverhams is on Mondays. Um, I, I will always be involved at some level in my local government and in my, in my position. I am that much of a junkie. Um, people have other, my husband loves to fish. I'm often online looking at everybody's website and, um, and, and love discovering the master plan and the service um, layout. So I, um, I don't do well staying still for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. It's just that he has a lot of night meetings also, so mm -hmm. you can't always count on just being going to a Wednesday night meeting. He goes to finance committee meetings. He, I don't know, spreads himself quite thin on a lot of different areas that it goes to throughout the day. He doesn't even have TV, so what does that tell you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Netflix. I'm not that sure. might help. That may be why. <laughs> but that that's, be that's his choice, and he's been, you know, steadfast for 15 years. So um, that's the difference of just being. And I'm not downplaying being a senior director, but you do have that opportunity and freedom that you are not having to do a lot of things in the evening also, so that you're available to do town things and city things that you, you know, make yourself available for that. So yeah, that, and that's the difference between the two, and, and that's what I'm looking at, your, what you're available Yeah, for. and, and, I, and I, I, I do, I would be asking those same questions. Um, Except it's hard for me to say I, I have a huge energy level. Yes. Um, and I, I do suspect that there would be some conflicts. Tonight there was a conflict. Um, we had a last minute board of selectmen meeting. And I called and said, do you have a quorum? They said yes. And I said, I can't be there. This is way too important. Um, and so I, I, I've got to, um, I want to say to, you, to all of you, I, um, I, I can do it. I can. But I would want that conversation to be open and say, Karen, we don't think you can do that. Then next year, that I would have to make that decision whether I wanted to run for selectman again, because this is what I this is what I want. 
this is what I want for the next 10 years. So um, I would absolutely um, be very open about that. And if there was any concerns with the selectmen, if you would give me and that, that ability. And that was another question I was going to ask. What was your longevity? My longevity? Your longevity of taking uh, 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 an administrator's position. What, what's your time frame? Is 10 years too long? <laughs> not, nothing is too long. Look at me. I mean, I mean, you know, I know, I know I'm looking here. So anything, I mean, you know, you can do whatever you feel like you can. Yeah, I am not. I don't do well at home. Um, when I I was home briefly uh, when COVID started, and pretty much pretty much said I, I can't work from home. And it, the senior center was really busy. I needed to be there. My staff was home. Um, I. I when my friends are telling me they're retiring for no other reason but that they want to, not for health reasons or anything, I'm like, why? Why? And so it's just, it's in my blood. I just, I, I really like to work. Um, and I don't do well, literally mentally, if I'm not busy and working and building on something, you know, creating something. And for me, that's creating in the, in the municipal atmosphere. I, I can understand that. I mean, like, you know, of course, I've got to ask these questions for my own mind. I can't do well sitting at home either. So. Yeah, I got that from you. <laughs> <laughs> so my other thing is, is that um, we've talked about OPEF um, previously. Uh, we were one of the first towns that, you know, um, jumped right in and started putting money into that. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with yes. the OPEF things you were on finance? So yes. Mm -hmm. um, what's your thoughts on And this year we had to do a little bit less than we normally did, but but not not a lot. But we'll, you know, Wilbraham really we don't depend as much on state aid, so um, we we really did okay towards the end of uh, fiscal year twenty. Um, in twenty one, we have not made any cuts. We we are still working on uh, the negotiations in which those increases are going to be, um, but we are in a fairly good place right now. But cautious, but cautious. Um, so we didn't, um, you know, I, I actually think we fully funded what we usually put, put aside for OPEP. Um, and I know, if, remembering watching some of your FinCom, um, you weren't able to put as much in as this year um, as usual. I, I think that it's important. We've got to keep that money in there. There were so many other communities that haven't even done anything. It amazes me. I, I did not think that there were communities yeah. that hadn't until being involved with MMA and just yeah. getting sitting in a lot of different committees and stuff. I realized that it really is a significant problem. So and the whole town has been my thing. I think having people in places such as uh, Ann, Dr. McKenzie is, is our superintendent and she does so well with our school system and our fire chief and our police chief. I mean, we hire people that are going to enhance our community and I, I think I've been lucky enough over doing this for 18 years that it's been, you know, we've gotten our community to where um, we're moving still in the right direction. We're not done yet with what we need to do, but we're right. working at it still. Right. Any thoughts on fire and police? I we probably have already talked about this and your other things. We've uh, done a great stride in the last few years, but we're not done yet. Right. So thoughts specific, specifically towards fire and police? Is that what your question is? I work very closely with ours um, in East Long Meadow. I'm part of the emergency management team. Um, and I said it before, but um, to the week of the two, 2011 October storm it was the happiest week of my career. And it was getting, to, it was just police, fire, um, council on aging, weird departments that clicked, like IT. So the, the, the core group was, believe it or not, our cable access person who became our advocate in the shelter. Was our, we, he was our um, advocate making sure seniors had their medicine and all of that. And then IT was our point person as far as getting all that information out. And then I would just work really closely with police and fire um, regarding the residents who are still out in the community and those that needed to come in. Um, but that has been one of my favorite things is being part of the emergency management team and being a shelter director. Um, uh, I work very closely with the two of our chiefs. So, yeah. Could you remind me of how big Wilbraham is and what the budget is? So, we'll, I, how many people in Wilbraham? Wilbraham is just under 15,000. Okay. And um, the budget is, what did I say this morning? I'm not even sure that they're totally accurate, but we have a regional school district, which is about 26, I think it's about 23 million. And then, our, so combined, um, 
it's about, I want to say between 40 and 48 million. And don't, oh, don't go back and check, because I'm just not 100% sure. There's just, today's been a little, like, <laughs> my brain's been all over the place today. It's really bad. What's, what's the way? <laughs> so. I'll ask the same two questions I asked uh, Tom. Uh, free cash, what's your uh, viewpoint on that? How, how should it be used? And, and what's the purpose? Ah, it's such a great finance, um, a finance question because we have differences on our finance committee about how free cash should be spent. Um, I, I do see that there's a purpose at times to use free cash to support building projects. Um, I am not a, a fan of supporting ongoing um, expenses, ongoing operating expenses. I don't think that's what it's really intended for. Unless it's a tough year and you need that. Um, I am a saver both with stabilization and with free cash. Um, as I mentioned earlier today, because of times like this, I think they're important. Um, but, but there are opposing opinions on that on our finance committee. Um, some don't think that, that we should do that. Um, so I guess I'm a little bit more uh, protective over it, and mentally, not as, a, as the previous chair, but. Okay. And then uh, the other question, a hard one, but. Um, Hadley isn't the highest paying town in the state, and so I just want to make sure you're familiar with the advertised salary range and that's right. something that's acceptable. It's municipal and it's COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the best response. And okay. Well, John? Uh, yeah, I'll ask the same questions I had. Um, grants and uh, short term loans or borrowing. I am. So that's probably 70% of my job is grant writing. Um, and I was trying to calculate going back 30 years um, of how much money I've generated through grants. Um, and it's millions through our building projects and uh, also getting uh, earmarks from the state. Um, I have really good relationships with our legislatures, which I think is really, really important. Um, to build up those relationships because we, we've been able to get earmarked for two senior centers that I worked at as well as a veterans memorial that we're building right now. Um, and that was just last year, so that was great. Um, but going back, but you know, our, all of the programs that take place in a senior center, it's not fully really funded by municipal um, funding. Um, and, and a good portion of it is through grants. But so I worked, I have a mobile food pantry um, that we just, uh, put off the ground. That was all grant funded um, for community development. I worked closely with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission um, to work together to get grants for our, for our towns. Um, sponsorships going after banks. I said it this morning. I'm a professional beggar. I have no problems asking for money. If bartering or saying, "Give me this and I'll give you that," um, and you know, we can. You want to sponsor something? I'll put your name on that. Not permanently, but I'll put your name on that and. Um, can pay for this aspect of an event or something like that. So um, I am familiar with that. Borrowing, I'm certainly aware of, certainly through the finance classes you take through the MBA and through the Suffolk program, but also um, working with my treasurer. Um, when I was going through those programs, he taught me a lot about short term borrowing and, and how he manages debt, which I think is brilliant. He's, he's one of the, I don't know a lot of the treasurers, but I, uh, the ones that I have, do know, he does a phenomenal job. Um, so that it's not a big shock in the community when a big project comes up. Um, We're trying to have it all out ourselves. Um, and the second question is with the, the situation where it was over and stuff like that. Uh, how do you how do you think you're going to handle level funding for the next year or two if we need to go that road? So I didn't hear the first part of your question. Uh, with, with the situation we're in with the uh, culvert. Mm -hmm. Uh, how would we handle, how would you handle uh, level funding across the board with all the departments if we have to so, go in that direction? The so taxpayers didn't want to fund it. Right. Um, so, pers so I've experienced two different things in East Long Meadow. Um, layoffs began in May, right away. In Wilbraham, we have not laid off. 
I'm not a fan of what, every single department you get, you're going to have to uh, go down a certain amount, or you're going to have to cut a certain amount. No, no just level fund, not, not cuts. Level fund. Level I think fund. level funding, and I'm sure you've heard the term before, level funding and level services is two yes. different things. Yes. Um, and I think that each department have to look at that individually on the impact on that department. And it is up to the department head to be able to fit. You would meet with that department to find out what's the impact. And then I think it has to be able to be presented to the Board of Selectmen on what that impact Similar will be. Similar to your needs list and your wish list. Yeah. And I, I'm going to tell you, just being in municipal, municipal for so long, I do feel like department heads in general do do a really good job of, you know, the people love to say zero base. Really, we always do that. But when, when it comes into a situa situation like this, I have not experienced where there's been a lot of department heads that have just have not truly looked at their budget and cut them they needed to. Um, I think that is the difference with, in a municipal environment versus a private. Um, I think they're able to look at their department uniquely and say, what can you, what can you handle? But I think in many cases, you have to look at departments differently. Um, it's hard for me as a council on aging director when I know if a, if a department, especially safety, um, is not going to have a dramatic cut. It's hard for, for a department head in my situation when we're, we're begging, you know, we get money from all the and all of that. But I, because I've been so involved with finance committee and different roles with the Mass Municipal Association. I understand those now, and the key is, is how to explain that to your department heads. And I think that's what's I, what I've seen has lacked, is not being able to, having a town administrator come to you and say, as a department head, this is what we have to do. This is the impact. How can you work with me? Let me see what your budget, what's going to happen if it's, if it's level funded. Um, so I, I guess, I get hesitant um, to say everything's level funded. Um, so I guess. Well, within their departments. You're, with, you're not, you're not, everybody's doing the same across the board in their own departments. You're, you're not taking 60% of one department and 20% of another. Level funding, you, to me, means across the board, what you were operating with last year, you will be operating again with this year. And, yeah, and so I think that's my response is to level fund the police department has a much more significant impact than it would on a department not providing that same type of service. Any last question? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for spending some time with us again today. Thank you. I almost <laughs> feel like family. <laughs> hey, something we're going to meet because you have things to teach me. <laughs> so thank you. It's nice to meet everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you. I didn't sign up today. Okay. So now it's time for some deliberations. Um, let's actually let's hear from the, the committee uh, since you guys decided to spend some more time with us this evening. <laughs> Do you have any input either way? If you'd like to provide, if not, that's okay too. Just for the uh, edification of the folks who weren't at the uh, other interviews or had a chance to maybe read all of the, the uh, essay question and answers, um, I will say, I don't know if everybody agrees with me, that the, the interviews that both of the candidates did tonight were certainly more in line with how they performed for the first time with the committee, in my opinion. Um, I think both of them earlier today when they were doing their presentation portion uh, definitely didn't do as well and tonight was probably a better example of how they did the first time around which is kind of what we used as a committee to rank them and, uh, and bring them back in so I would say what you saw tonight was uh, more in line with how they reacted to the questions that we had as well as you know their answering of your questions was certainly more on par with how I would assume they would actually handle those scenarios as opposed to what we did earlier today which was a department head meeting more of a simulation just to try to see how they can handle it so I think 
we probably gained a little bit more knowledge um, of how they would do the job from this than maybe we got earlier today. That's just my, my take on it. Anybody else? Paul, Chief, Dr. McKenzie? Well, I think I mean, we had some pretty robust discussions, as you know, after the interviews, and a lot of it too boiled down to uh, experience on one hand versus maybe a little more energy on the other hand. And uh, we we're also discussing longevity, but tonight both of the candidates addressed that those issues. So I think that's been answered for us, so that's no longer a concern. This, I know in my heart, I can't speak for the rest of the committee, but longevity weighs me I've been on many search committees throughout my career, and it seems to always uh, work out in the end if we go with longevity versus some uh, individual who hasn't the experience in a position, not even one day of experience. That's the decision that you as a board of selectmen will have to make today. One of the considerations that we have to put into play. I learned a little bit more from both uh, candidates. Unfortunately, I missed the uh, the second interview, but um, I learned some additional stuff tonight that I don't envy you guys having to make the decision. I'm just glad they were passing. <laughs> Passed off. I, in my opinion, two extremely good candidates. Um, I have in my mind. Uh, I have in my mind who I would choose, um, and but I, I I would prefer that it's a decision that you guys make. I know that I'm the one who will do a great job, um, and I'm just looking forward to moving forward in the future and adding adding new and being consistent with what we have going on right now. One thing I did bring up today was the fact that we have some really strong department heads, and Joyce, you said that too. We have a really good team together. It's a good foundation for and support for the town administrator. And, you know, David has, I think, fostered that as well. Um, so I think whoever's coming in is going to feel that. It's going to feel that people want to be there and move forward. I think that the select board has two great candidates to choose from. I think um, yeah, I would be equally comfortable with whatever choice the select board makes. We interviewed great people, and I feel good about all the folks that we brought forward this afternoon. And I don't think you all can go wrong, so. And I'm really still recovering from the fact that David doesn't have TV. That's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, David. I want them to I know how they David. work continuously. <laughs> I know you do other things. Sometimes I always thought you didn't because <laughs> you get a TV after you retire. Yeah. <laughs> but you give it to him as a farewell. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So three years service with that cable or something. <laughs> to go with it. So I'm a little concerned about the way that um, he answered the question about salary. I actually am as well. I mean, uh, by no means was I asking him to negotiate the salary of the public. I was just making sure that he's familiar with the advertised range and that's what he was okay with sticking with him. So that, to I me, mean, is- Because there was something in his early writing mm -hmm. that said that salary should be commensurate with experience, indicating to me that he didn't think that what we were offering for this job was appropriate for him. But I also didn't think that tonight was an appropriate place. I think he maybe had misjudged the question and maybe thought that you wanted to talk about salary. Yeah. I, I, and I don't think this is the place when you're interviewing them to have a discussion of salary that should be done privately also. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, but I didn't hear the question that way. It was just, do you understand what we're offering? And that was my intention. I don't know if it came across wrong, but that, that's what it's supposed to. If, if, if I may, uh, one of the things that uh, we do as consultants is we have phone interviews with, uh, we have to talk to all 13, and uh, one of the questions we ask is, are you aware of the salary range? You know, do you have any issues? You know, 
you know, it, it was like 90 to, I think, 110. You know, are, are you okay with that range? And, you know, they, they all said yes. So they all, and, and we do that because we have some people that say, well, you know, I'm moving from East Overshoe, and I, you know, and then we say, well, you know, you're not getting any more than, than 110. I mean, it, it, or whatever the number is. So we always verify that they know what the salary range is so that things don't break down. If you, you, get, if you should make a tentative appointment to uh, Ms. Jones, Ms. Jones says, oh, well, I, gee, I, I didn't know. Of course they knew. I asked them, and you asked them here. So I, I, I personally, I didn't interpret it like he was gonna look for a penny more because you published, you published the top end. And even if he had mentioned that in his um, right example, right example that uh, experience does count when you're hiring somebody and you're going for a job. It does depend on what your experience is and what's going to be offered to you for salary. That does play a factor as long as it's not with it outside of the range that we are already offering. Mm -hmm. As long as it's within the range. That's right. All right. Yeah. And I think he, you know, with his experience, he's probably looking to start start at the higher end of the range as opposed to the lower end of the range. That's kind of the way I interpret interpreted his comment. Yeah, I, I wasn't offended by that. I think he just misunderstood the question. If I had to like throw a candidate out there, um, I would I would uh, say I like Carolyn's energy a lot, mm -hmm. and I like her passion in it. I know what Paul's saying with experience and not being a risk, but I just got the feeling from her that she's really invested in doing this. I mean, she spent the past, I was impressed on her resume, how much effort she's put into getting to this point and has made a, a lot of investment in that. And I kind of feel like just her energy level, her commitment would be a great, you know, injection of enthusiasm into the town on a certain level and a fresh set of eyes has experience being on the other end of, of being a department head and knowing what that's like. And I think that's a really great perspective to bring to that town administrator. Um, so that's just kind of how I feel about it. I, I think they're both great candidates. I don't think we can really make a wrong decision, but just if I had to choose one, that would be the choice I would go with. And I, I, I do have the concern about her being on the board of selectmen and doing an administrator's job, I think the two of them combined in opposite towns. I mean, I, I wasn't kidding at, at how much work it entails to be an administrator. And thank God we have an assistant administrator, assistant that uh, helps it, um, our administrator. But uh, when you're also a part of a select board, there's a lot that goes into that also. So I, d I do have concerns about that also. But she about did acknowledge that too and say she, she was did. willing to evaluate that. And this this is what she wants to do as a right. town administrator, not be on the select board. So. But she did also did say she'd give up being on the select board. She, was she just, said she, she wouldn't run again in a year. Oh, she was just put on. Though. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. now you got three years of on a select board. She made it sound like one year. year. But I don't know. Yeah, I'm not no. sure. I'm not sure either. But anyway, that would be. Okay. I thought they were both. I like all of their both of their answers. And so, what are we gonna do, John? You're quiet over there. What do you have to say? You always have something to say. Come on. Well, <laughs> well who's gonna be the designing vote? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're gonna make a bad choice either way. Uh, if if you offered it to Tom and. Then didn't accept it, then are we going to go after the second one, or have, has anybody thought of that? Well, yeah. Now that I brought it up. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's uh, a, a, a fair question. The, the way the motion would read for the um, appointment, so called, is it's a tentative offer subject to three things. Subject to successful negotiation of a, con a negotiation of a contract, success uh, a satisfactory background check, and a town physical if you require one. And I don't know 
uh, David, if, if it's reversed. Some towns do, some towns don't. Uh, we just need to have scheduled or an officer. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so that it, is a medical condition. <laughs> that, so it, it, you know, um, it is contingent on two things. Then, um, could you go back if you're unsuccessful with candidate A? Go back to candidate B. Yes, you can. Um, could it be a little clunky? It can be, but if candidate B really wants it, then and if you you know you feel strongly that they're very close, but there's something about A that just had that little edge, you know, little edge. Uh, it, it's not unusual uh, to go back, but uh, well, so you can. The short answer is you can. It's, so my my two concerns with the candidates are Tom is very experienced obviously which to me means that he's has a set way of doing things and he's used to doing things in barn or however he does it and maybe that's not going to be a good fit for having and change can be difficult and so that's something to think about it could be a, even though he has the experience it could be a rough transition for Carolyn my concern is she's been in government for a long time problem is that experience most of it is council on aging which is great but it's a very narrow field as far as town government goes so does that necessarily trans uh, translate into being a good administrator I don't know so that's kind of the, the two negatives that I'm weighing between the candidates you know the, the, the passion she has is fantastic I love the energy and that could that could be a good thing for the town on the other hand, you've got those other two negatives to consider. So, I'm, I'm going with Carolyn's energy, and I think we, as a town, have something to offer that makes a difference there, and that is our town administrator will be available for the next five months as a resource for her. And that's very unusual, and I think in this case, we really get her feet on the ground and have her and I agree with you. I think that Patty is not born at all. And sometimes I worry about people who have done a job for too long that they just have a routine. It's like academics who teach the same class year after year. I was married to one for a while. Year after year. And it gets old and it gets tired. They don't have to work about it. And they don't have to think about it. It just comes out. And it may not be the best for this town if it's done the way it was done. So, any further discussion? We need a motion one way or another, a decision one way or another. I'll move. Yep. I'll work here on the job. I'll second. Discussion? Well, just to amend that, uh, subject to contract negotiations and background check. Yeah, uh, there's a very specific motion which I'll hand you in a moment. Uh -huh. Yep. And we're not supposed to be touching paper, so. <laughs> Sorry, I'll
choice. Okay, you didn't say one way or another. <laughs> You're the decider. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 you got to speak quicker. You got to speak quicker. Now, John, you're a waiter. Somebody make the second. I'll make motion. a motion to <laughs> whatever she said. <laughs> I think you got to read it. Uh, I move to authorize municipal resources incorporated to make conditional offer to employment to Tom Karina. 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 Uh, for the position of town administrator in town of Valley, this offer is. Conditioned upon the satisfactory background, the review, and investigation conducted under the town of Hadley, and su successfully negotiated the terms of appointment by the select board. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on that motion? All those in favor of that? Aye. 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 No. <laughs> I'm going to say no. Yes. All right, so motion carries. Um, I'd like to make another motion that if we do not have a successful uh, contract negotiation with Tom, that we are able to offer the position to Carol. Second on that. Second. Any discussion on that? i just say that uh, Jane and I, as the committee members, that'll be working on the contract negotiations. Um, it's my intention that we're firmly within that salary range. So yeah. if there's any trying to sneak above that, that's going to be a part of them, in my opinion. So. And is that salary range include benefits? What, what, is, what does that specifically say? I think you can get into that afterwards with David and what a drawing up a contract. Okay. Um, we don't need to do that tonight. Because also you would want to put in there a probationary period also um, to make sure that uh, you know either three months, six months, uh, just to make sure things are copacetic. Yep. So uh, all those in favor of uh, if contract negotiations with background fails to offer it to you, Kelly. Aye. 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 Okay. Committee members, thank you for all your time. Lots and lots of time and lots and lots of work. I appreciate it. Thank you. Ready for thank you. Uh, all right. See you. Thank you, boss. Good job. Uh, my pleasure. Good, good working with you folks, David. I'll be in touch. Certainly. I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll inform the candidates tonight and the, the chief. Uh, I will get a release uh, from Tom that will uh, acknowledge that a background check will be done. The chief will be in touch with him about the details on what exactly he needs so he can do the investigation. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Good. Thank you for your work, Wes. Thank you. Be before I go, is this the last time we're going to see you? Yes, ma'am. Yes. God bless and good luck. And God uh, keep you safe. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. I look forward to my return. I see you. John, take that. Yeah. John, John, I want to keep that, please. Oh, since, since you made it special. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's all right. All right, we're just going to take a uh, two-minute recess here, and then uh, we'll we'll keep going on the agenda. All right, so we'll continue on the agenda. Let's take care of the polling lo location change. Uh, the town clerk had asked the select board to vote on changing the polling location from Hopkins Academy to the new senior center. All voters must be notified by mail 20 days before the next election, which is September 1st, 2020. The state will survey, survey the new location in July, which has actually already been done. Uh, and the state has approved of uh, change in polling location to the senior center already. So that's taken care of. Fire Chief had something to say? She just wanted to let you know it's not required to notify, but she feels that it's, that it's very important to do it, so she's still doing it. Yep. 
yeah, we, uh, David and I spoke with her about it, and we said, please notify everybody, even if it's not required. And we really like oh, it because it will bring people oh. into this building they aren't able to see otherwise. Motion to accept. Second. Just is going to be temporary for no, permanent. permanent. Permanently. Uh, any further discussion? I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Jumping around here, moving right along. Um, David, can we wait on the capital plan until August? Is that? Yep. Okay. Because that might take a little while to go through. Uh, cable franchise, that can wait until August, correct? Yep. Okay. What is the date on the cable franchise agreement, I yeah. think it's uh, mid March uh, 2024. But it's all a three year process. Yeah. So, one of the things, just a quickie about this, is I think we should change the name of the committee if we reappoint a committee. It's not an oversight committee anymore, it's a committee to focus on the cable contract. I think there's two. One is an oversight committee for having media, and one is for negotiations, correct, David? Correct. Okay. Okay. So, two, two separate is what we need. Okay. Uh, okay, but we'll put that on hold. Um, let's take sewer care of abatement. Yeah, let's do the abatement, sewer abatement. This would be a quick one. Uh, sewer abatement for what number, please? 65. 65. For 40 Russell Street due to a water leak. Uh, um, both the collector and the DPWs recommend against. And uh, typically, if Water passes through the meter, it's bills, regardless of what happens in the person's parking, uh, person's property. So, um, motion to deny. Can we give a second? second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of denying the motion? Aye. 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 Okay. That was a quick one. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Let's do RFP for landfill. That's a quick one. Uh, yeah, I just would like to authorize David to put out an RFP to see what we can get. You know, a lot of towns have solar on their landfills and things like that. We have a big chunk of land right there that's being used for nothing. Maybe it can generate some revenue for the town. So maybe nobody would be interested, but it doesn't hurt to put it out. So that's why I asked David to put that on there. Do we have a, uh, an example from another town that did this? I mean, I know in Northampton that it so there has to be something there. I mean, I can, uh, I know there's a few towns in Eastern Mass and there are some grant programs which we missed out on for, for doing that. Okay. But, uh, we can pull some examples. So. And okay. We don't have a contract with them that's going to interfere with our use of that part of the So they, they get the area, the, the dump that they operate the transfer station in for free. Um, and the rest of the actual landfill is still owned and maintained by the town. We have to do tests and things like that on the, the cap. So, uh, no, we still have control over those areas. Mm -hmm. so, could I get a motion to authorize David to put it out? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> okay, uh, let's do affordable housing trustees appointment, number 6.4. Uh, annual town meeting approved the general bylaw relating to an affordable housing trust fund. The select board is asked to appoint the trustees for a one year period. Planning board has volunteered to serve as the first board along with one or more select board members in the interest of time and to secure funds currently being held by others, which is a, an attorney's trust fund. As soon as possible, planning board suggests that the customary letters of interest be put on hold until next year. Um, I think. Christian was interested in yeah, serving on that. I, I offered to serve on the board, or is it a board? Yes, and I would like to join you on there if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, so any, any other interest in it? Two to none. All right. So I think, second, you have, I think you have to appoint the planning board members as well. Okay. Did you say Bill Dwyer? Uh, I just, think we need five. It was the entire planning board and then one or two select boards because it says the planning board would serve as the first board along the country. And I thought we talked about our old board. So uh, why don't we appoint the entire planning board Yeah. and then the two select board members for now? Sounds good. So, second. Okay. 
Any more further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, marijuana community host agreement. Does this need to be done tonight, or are we on a timeline here? Or? Yeah, if we could if we could take care of the contracts that are in that. Uh, okay. Are we meeting next week? This plan? No. No, the next one is August 5th. August 5th. So, yeah. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> David, would you mind just telling us what the differences are? Like, are there any changes? Yes. Uh, so, so, here? so the, uh, the, the select board took a uh, vote having to do with the, the entrance and then uh, the exit of the, of the uh, of Hadley Holistics and the Hampshire Mall. Uh, we incorporated those uh, requirements into the new uh, community host agreement. The salient features of the new community host agreement is uh, the town gets 3% of the gross revenue from retail sales of adult use marijuana. Um, the Hadley Holistics uh, contributes $10,000 to a Hadley charitable fund that they've already named it. Uh, it's not in the document and so I don't want to say it out loud until they've had a chance to uh, commit fully to this. Um, and um, then there are certain performance measures that they need to adhere to. Uh, and we can renegotiate this in a five-year time, uh, time frame. So this is a five-year contract, 3%. $10,000 plus 40 hours of community service um, and uh, renegotiation how with, does, with the changed uh, entrance. How does this compare to our host agreement with uh, the heirloom collective? Is it? It's about the same. Okay. okay. Can I get a motion, please? I can make a motion that we sign the host community agreement with Hadley Holistics. Second. 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 Has this been reviewed by Police and Fire? Uh, no, it hasn't. I, I haven't reviewed the actual agreement, but everything right up to it, as long as I was involved in the process for the first one. So if it's on par with that one, I was involved in that. And they haven't pulled any permits, like building permits or anything along those lines yet. So that would have to get signed off from police and fire. Okay. Yeah. Planning board as well, I guess, for a site plan. Yeah. Okay. So any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay. Um, good. Two. Then, then we have the accounting agreement to extend that for one more year before going out to bid if I can. I'd like to pull that until we have our scheduled conversation on Friday and then uh, put move that to the fifth if that or our next meeting if that all goes well all right. um, and then it mentions ambulance service but I see two have leaf agreements attached is there an ambulance amendment uh, yeah we are uh, still working on that so that we're not ready for okay so that's it for that And I'm still working on the point software. I sent over the uh, device contract to point, and I don't hear anything back from them. And so I'll show send them a note tomorrow morning and say, you know, time to waste them. So um, I, we may have done this already, but can someone move that we allow David or myself to sign the contract on behalf of the select board once we're ready so we don't have to wait until August? Still. Second. Be out of chair. This is with the uh, the building inspection software. Okay. So we have a second. Yep. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And I think the chief you you were here because we're, we're going to be talking about this is this the uh, diversity inclusion committee? Yeah, I, I saw on the agenda, and I know that it was something that had come up, you know, last year, which and I had discussed it, and discussed it with David a little bit, so, um, just gonna... We'll jump into that, then. Since, uh, if it loads. All right, so we uh, voted to establish a diversity and inclusion committee, I think, a year or so ago, and uh, maybe two years ago. Uh, 
um, and we don't have any members currently. But Christian has volunteered to chair the committee, I think, right? Yeah, I, you know, we did meet this week actually, kind of what a preliminary group of people to try to get it kicked off. Um, and I, I wanted to kind of hold this off until the, the next meeting so that we could kind of, um, you know, we have this one mission statement, but I was hoping to put something a little bit better together. Um, some people did have the, the issue with the word civility, so we might just tweak the name a little bit so it's more in line. Um, so that's going to be the goal right now, is to kind of have that mission statement, the organization, and a name by the August 5th meeting. And, you know, as far as police involvement goes, I want to just balance that. I want your involvement and I want your input, but I also don't want to intimidate people from having like um, being fearful of being open in discussion. So I, we just need to talk about how we want to best integrate that. Yeah, you know, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't gonna try to force my way in. No, I, no, I was, no. Uh, I was going to handle it very similarly to, you know, how I, I've attended some of the, mm -hmm. the uh, race related discussions that have been going on yeah. at Hadley and. Um, it was more of just an offer. Yeah. Um, if, if I read the, the mission statement, and it certainly doesn't, it's not directed at the police department. No. It's more directed as a community wide effort. Um, but I want to offer myself or, you know, Lieutenant Cook yeah. to be available in the event that you wanted us on the, on the committee to, to discuss things having to do with the police department, or uh, if you'd like to solicit input when there comes a time during a meeting where you're discussing something about the police department. Yeah, that's, I, I would love your involvement. I just don't want to have people feel like, oh, there's going to be police watching this type of thing, have that image. And so I completely respect you, your opinion, and your involvement in it. And I just want to balance that with everybody's needs and pull, pull you in as needed and as we can have a, a better dialogue. And I think part of the conversation we had was, what is the mission statement? What is the goal of this committee right now? Because if you just look at it broadly, we could go in 30 different directions. And I was kind of like, let's come up with some achievable goals that people are interested in doing instead of having broad goals that aren't really, we can't achieve, you know? And so that's what we're kind of working on. Yeah, so if and you're gonna hold off till the fifth, you know, whether I'm there or at the meeting or not, I guess that's what I would put to the board today. Yeah. So that you're aware that we are willing to be involved yeah. uh, if, if you want us. Oh yeah, I de definitely, with that, as like, the person, the select board liaison on to that committee, I want your involvement in it, but maybe not every meeting, you know? You could have all the We could, uh, I mean, it's, it's an ad hoc committee, but it would be nice if we could. I was hoping actually to set it up where there could be a recording, like quarterly or you know something along those lines presentation to the select board that engages the conversation and maybe that's more recorded than individual discussions so I don't know with ad hoc committees or um, committees along this line if they have to be recorded and I think we have to be very careful with this committee yeah I think that um, there's been a little fuel in the fire along the way here over the past couple of years and I you know, I don't know how many people have submitted their names to you, but we have had no discussion on how many people we would think would be appropriate for this committee without mm -hmm. turning it into a, to say this, like a bitch session. You know? yeah. But I think, no, that, no, I think that this type of committee needs to have, like you say, your mission statement needs to certainly clarify on what the goals are going to be. Yeah, yeah. And not just be out there to, um, complain, complain, but how can we fix things? How can we go about things? And I think with the chief offering his presence, I think I would like people to not feel intimidated that they are present and they are willing to do whatever they need to do. And I, you know, and that committee can certainly work yeah. with how they would like to have that offered. But I think that's a good offer. Yeah, I just want to balance that sure. with, you know. Yeah. You, you said you had like 10 names, something ten, like that? Ten, I think around 10 people right now, yeah. Be, so. Before the fifth, will you let us know who they are? Yeah, I, yeah I, was, I was telling them it would be really great to have something 
a week before the fifth, so we could give it to the select board. Then you guys have a chance to review it, so you don't get there on the fifth. And like, what is what is the number that we would like on the committee? And what, what is the number, please? <laughs> you don't want to do what we did today. Yeah, you know, that six doesn't work very well. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she all did a good job. We could shoot for nine members, but then have the meetings open to more people or something along those lines. It certainly is an open meeting. Yes. Yeah. 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 So if we do nine, it's meant to be open. Mm -hmm. You know, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then, Fifteen on a committee is getting a little bit over. Yeah, that would be a lot of voting members. Yeah. All right. Well, then we'll put it back on the agenda for the fifth and. Can bring it back yeah. and let us know. All right, um, let's do budget transfers. Six, seven point two, end of year line items. Yeah, so there's uh, four thousand five hundred one dollars worth of budget transfers by thousand or so. These are very small transfers, uh, just cleaning up line items that uh, overran. Uh, and I've already talked to the, the finance committee chair, so she knows that this is coming. Thank you. Good night. We get a motion to approve this. Uh, so moved. Second. Second from Christian. Any further discussion on the transfers? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody said it on the budget. Yep, pretty good. That's good. Yeah, well. Let's see, we have um, COVID 19 update. David, do you have anything you want to hit on that? Yeah, just very briefly, the, uh, the governor has moved us into the first part of phase three, which means that we have more restaurants, retail shops, sports and rainings, museums, uh, other uh, venues. Uh, they're opening up, and uh, so we'll continue to work with our business community to make sure that licenses, inspections, all of this is expedited. Uh, there's also a, a revision on the um, gatherings requirements, and so there are more opportunities for people to gather in higher numbers. Uh, obviously, prevention of transmission of this disease is paramount, so there are different uh, requirements based upon where you are, what you're doing, whether you're indoors or outdoors. Um, you've got to wear a mask where you have to uh, participate in some way to prevent the disease from transmitting from one person to another. So a lot of details there, a lot of uh, conditional uh, permissions, uh, but basically things are opening up in Massachusetts uh, um, more f uh, broadly. I think the main thing that we need to really be concerned about and aware of, and I'm not sure if anybody, if we've had any contact with somebody from the five college areas with all of the students converging on this area now on August 24th and 25th. We are now going to have quite a few people traveling in from across the country to go to these colleges. Mm -hmm. So our our awareness and our guard needs to be up even higher, uh, especially with people coming from areas of Florida, Texas, areas that right now are unindated with COVID patients that their uh, uh, hospitals are uh, in a mess down there. So they're having no beds in their ICUs. So I mean, now we're going to be kind of coming into this area from across the country, and I and I think we need to put out there any conversation at all with colleges, Mike, about the COVID and, and what they're doing. I know that they put in the paper certain rules and guidelines that they want their students to adhere to, but when students are living off campus, it's going to be kind of hard to um, keep track of them. Yeah, so we have a we have a unified command meeting that we're trying to set up for this Friday. So we're talking about phase three reopening, new new gathering regulations. Uh, there were five colleges. We live in a thirty campus community, so we got to be thinking about all of that. And so even even bigger than that, uh, I'm starting to work with the schools right now. The schools are they have some really big challenges coming up. So we're going to be working closely with them on 
planning and uh, making sure that we have resources available because it's it's not it's still not easy to get stuff. So mm -hmm. so we are working on that planning department. Has there been a definitive definitive plan in place for the schools right now? No, they're still waiting for, for guidance from the state. Once that guidance comes out, they can they can kind of work towards their their plans. But we're you know we're starting to have a dialogue to make sure that we're ahead of the So before we get too far down the line with uh, through the calendar year here, could we reach out to various departments and have them total up what because we're supposed to be keeping track of, of expenditures for possible reimbursement? I just want to make sure we're keeping on top of that. Yeah. And so we're not trying to remember what we spent six months from now. We have um, there's been a, I mean there's been a few uh, items that have gone through other departments, but everything has been funneled through my emergency management budget. Okay. Um, bills were just shipped out for the first responder hotel, so we'll be processing that. Uh, okay. I have the schools um, stuff. It's an ongoing it's an ongoing project. Obviously, I've reached out to FEMA four or five times just to ensure that we're doing this properly, and so the. FEMA request and then the CARES Act that fills in blanks after that. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working on a grant now that's due by Friday for some additional PBE. Um, so you know, we're still we're still in response mode on, on some of this. And so yes, we are keeping very good track um, and, and documenting very closely what the purpose of the funding is to make sure that it's supporting COVID, you know, actually COVID uh, response. Could you just put out to the other departments any expenditures they have related to it, maybe up to June 30th or something, make sure that the chief is aware so that way we can get that reimbursement? Yeah. We have no patients at schooling with COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm very happy about that. Um, the one thing that they're going to do now in the area is they're going to be testing all nursing home personnel. So they're going to all have to get tested right now. At the hospital, they've tested nurses that have had to go from ICU, uh, those working in the OR, and that nature of anybody that will be having close uh, proximity before the OR had reopened up again. So, all we also have really just, uh, there we have just <laughs> tested the ones that had been not in those areas and have been on the floors working with COVID patients. Yeah, um, just uh, the library is, you know possibly to talk about some reopening of the Goodwin. It's complicated because I think it does in the construction update, but the new library might be done around Labor Day for moving in. So, you know, they don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of two month time period right now to do something in the Goodwin possibly. But I guess some clarification I wanted is just for us, phase three guidelines, the governor's putting out those are the guidelines we're kind of basing all our opening on. So, um, same with the city center. Yeah, so we're kind of using that as a guide as far as I'm concerned and what I've been telling the library for, you know, when they're thinking about reopening. Yeah, the only concern I think as a unified command we had from the library initially was if they're going to be using a ton of PPE in yeah. order to conduct their normal business operations. And they need to look toward donations or at least reimbursement, you know, down the line, because we don't have a ton that we can give away unless that, we've gotten more. Yeah, that's what I'm getting the gist of as we're talking here. Yeah. That that could be a real stumbling block, right? But yeah, just get them open if we can. Same thing. I mean, basically, same thing as the senior center operations. Once, well, we're once, not once we get there. Phase four. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So and then we have the the whole thing about the phase books. I mean, we. That nature, touching everything in there, you know, it's computers so, and things that they have. The water and the wastewater has had minimal PPEs uh, given to just water and just wastewater through the organizations, the municipal water. But on top of that, NEMA has given you guys more than enough to handle most of all the staff, police, fire. It's it's been it's it hasn't been easy. I mean, it's starting to come out, but. Initially, there really wasn't anything. Oh no, there was nothing originally. But they're, they're giving you like the water and wastewater. are giving you minimal amounts, or, so enough to keep the staff working. Yeah. Their regular schedules. Hanford County and the fire chiefs have the cash together because we're we want to ensure that if we 
have an increase in cases, that we will be able to still support the floating after count tank. So we did, uh, when prices were still a little bit lower on equipment, we do have that cash that's that's available that we've been, you know, sharing with other communities. Okay. Um, what's oh. going on? Good. Oh, let's, uh, oh, let's do the library and fire station and senior center updates real quick. And then. I'll go first. You're here. Yeah. <laughs> we still have some some bugs that we're um, working on, but basically. Yeah. Okay. Jane, there was a request from the OPM that we extend the contract. Oh, right. Um, and that's reasonable because the, we need our advocate to be behind us in terms of making sure all the problems get resolved. I don't know if you heard the beeping going on during the meeting. That's the internet problem with our emergency call system in the bathrooms. So we unplugged it, but it goes off at weird times and nobody, I had not thought about that while he was here today, but it's another issue. <laughs> We're having a trouble, some of you may have noticed, with the sewage smell in the bathrooms and in the, the back um, uh, art room, which is really coming from the toilets down there. Mm -hmm. It appears from the plumber's viewpoint that grout has been poured down a drain that would normally be used to um, take that smell away. So the plumber has been in, they're putting in all kinds of really terrible things to try and clean it out. And it's working somewhat, but it's a process. And we'll plug toilets now for you. No, we'll plug the toilets. It's just the stench. <laughs> the toilets have traps in them and the drains do not. So have they wet all the traps to double check and make sure that they're not dry? This has been going on since June 1st when we moved in. And yes, they have because we're very vocal about it. Also, the HVAC issues, right? And the, the heating and air conditioning getting a temperature. They acknowledge that the system is working the way it was designed, and they acknowledge that the residents in the building are not happy with the way the system is working. Mostly, we're really cold. At one point, they said the easy way to fix this is we'll fire up the boilers as well as the air conditioners. And I said, no, no, that's not, that's not the inexpensive way to fix this. So I suggested that they reset their set points up four degrees, because we were always four degrees colder. And they've done that, and it seems somewhat better. Okay. I can make a motion to uh, extend the uh, OPM contract for the Canva Padway Senior Center. I'll start. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then uh, Joyce, fire station. Fire station, yeah. Since we're not meeting until August 8th, we still want to hold off on that. And to just mention slightly that we're looking yeah. into it. Not we're looking into it, can mention it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what about fiber optic? We're, we're, yeah. we, we're putting fiber optic in from up at the North Valley Fire Station down to the center. And it has come to Mike's attention that the senior center and the library in the town hall. Yep. We're, we're just gonna we're gonna investigate what it would what it would take to network all of these buildings together. So that way we would be done with it. Uh, we're we're working with Northeast IT and the IT folks for the projects um, because the plan is to try and have all of our fire uh, alarms monitored at the center station. So by uh, looking into this, we're hoping that we can, uh, you know, see it through our budget and then also just cover some shortfalls uh, for some of the other projects. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, one thing so, go uh, ahead. The uh, new North Alley Fire Station looks great with the sprinkler systems and the lawn and the mandatory water band sign on the lawn <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> That. They, they have not been on though. I drive by it many times a day. They have not been on. They were clearly, we went up there the, the day I spoke with Chris over for a couple of and they were not on. <laughs> um, 
Phil Colombo uh, just wanted us to vote on adding 11 days to the GC's uh, substantial completion time frame. So June 13th to June 24th. Uh, this is to simply align the substantial completion certificate date with the contractual substantial completion date. Um, so if I could get a motion on that just to approve that. So moved. Sorry. Any further discussion? This is June 23rd? It so is, it's the June 13th to the 24th. Okay. We're way past that. Already. We're in July though, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But it's not July. No. No, it was, it was just a substantial completion. So it was, it's just making sure it was in line because it was supposed to have its substantial okay. completion. Paperwork. But it wasn't. Okay. We had a temporary C level rather than a full C level. So just yeah. fixing the paperwork issue then? Correct. Correct. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And other than that, we're almost, this list is getting thinner and thinner, and uh, we're looking at probably August uh, for an opening date, you know, putting it off until we can have people come in um, to take a look at it. And Are there fire trucks in there yet? Or is it? Not yet. No. Not yet. Speaking of that, David, can we uh, talk to Senator Comerford and uh, Representative Kerry and see where our North Hadley Hall Article 97 legislation is? Because once those fire trucks are out of there, we need the, the building out of there too, or gone. <laughs> One way or another. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Senator Comerford, right, I can say the library too if you want. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, they're looking at Labor Day, hopefully, as like a move-in date, uh, substantial completion, and the next things will be going out to bid for solar that's coming down the line. That's just to get the, um, the lead certification guaranteed and get that $100,000 grant for having the lead certification, and then... Um, you know, kind of the library community has come together to get a good deal on landscaping materials from Wanzik Nursery, and they're putting out to bid the installation of the landscaping, um, but there will also be some community involvement in installing that landscaping. Uh, one other thing is just needing to coordinate with the senior center on some activities that still have to happen in that paved area, like they have to put curbs in and different things along those lines. So. Um, Jane, I don't know if you're willing to serve as a point person, or I don't know if Bill or who's like, okay. That's about it. All right, great. They both look, buildings look good all around. All right, last, uh, well, next to last, uh, common victualler license for Joy Bowl. Jennifer, do you wanna? Yes. Yeah. Um, so Joy Bowl is a poke restaurant that's opening up in the Forest Street Frog location. Um, I'm asking you to take this up as an item for seeing because I got um, what I held approval when you were doing your first interview, so I did have that on the agenda. Um, they have submitted the paperwork, they're okay with the building inspector, the fire department, and with the Board of Health, so I would ask that you approve their application. Um, there was a little bit of should they come tonight or not, and um, you know, I offered those both options, but they did not. So can I get a motion? Can make a motion that we approve a common picture license for Joy Bowl restaurant. Okay. Any further discussion? No. All right, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank and you very much. We will skip the administrative report, no offense David, and also the liaison reports for tonight since it's been a long, long day. Uh, we've been at this since 11.30, so. Um, Let's just go with announcements. Uh, Cultural Council, Haiku and Hadley. Um, I put the whole announcement on there. I didn't expect y'all to read it, but the Cultural Council has, um, working with their poet laureate, has put haikus on the bike trail mm -hmm. for people to see, and they're going to look at moving it around and putting them in other places in the town. And I thought it was just a little bit of good news y'all might want to share. Yeah, it's uh, their little blue signs along the bike path, and they're kind of cool. They're all over the place with little different poems on them. Um, all right, any other announcements? Yes. 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 No, I, the only one I had was a Mrs. Buddha that passed away, and that's um, 
married Zelensky's mom, their mutual mom, um, and their dad. So condolences to, to them and their families on um, their mother passing. Any other announcements? I have uh, the next meeting we are scheduled for is August 5th, according to my calendar. Is that what everybody else has? Here is Zoom. Uh, Zoom, back to Zoom. So, um, at least. We're going to Zoom for August and see what, what yeah. September brings. Yeah, we'll reevaluate for September, but at least for August. This was a, a special circumstance with the, the interviews. It was a very important position to try to do over a Zoom call. So that's all I have. David, do you have anything else? No, I think we're, that's a good meeting. It's a good day for Madeline. Okay. Right. Motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night.